so glad to be working with you. And I'm an enormous fan of District 97. You guys are amazing. You always have been. And knowing what you're going through and how you're adapting. Um, I'm happy to be a part of maybe giving you a little bit of uh, self-care and a chance to bring some of your self back. Um, when I know so much of you is going out as you give, give, give to your students and to your families. Um, so we're just gonna jump right in and we've got a great all around class that'll um, hopefully get us really kind of reclaim ourselves, get our energy back and um, get us grounded. And so we're gonna make do as I'm sure you're very, very used to doing. If you don't have a block or a blanket, you can use a rolled up towel um, or a blanket. And if you don't have a mat, uh, we're just gonna wing it and make the most of it. You can use a, a towel or a, a rug as well. But we're gonna go ahead and get started in a seated position. And so find a comfortable seat here and we'll start with a spinal warm up. So we're gonna be inhaling and rocking forward and exhaling back. And it's like we're making these big circles in one direction with the rib cage around your hips. And so you can think about sort of the spine being a big spoon. It's like you're stirring the pot of the pelvis. So we're just gonna start by getting in our bodies here and begin to move out of whatever came before and start to come into a more inward place. So if you can bring your awareness to whatever's touching the floor here and bring your awareness to your base. Again, we'll inhale forward and exhale back. If it helps to come inward to close the eyes or just find a soft gaze, you can do that. We'll sort of move out of this outwardly projected place to come into a more inwardly or reflective place. And then switch directions, we'll inhale forward and exhale back. If this doesn't feel so good on the knees, you can bring the feet out a little farther away from you. You can also sit up on a, a blanket or a block to get the hips a little bit higher. And whatever we work with today in whatever pose, just honor your body. Really so important that you make the pose work with your body rather than kind of trying to fit your body to the pose. So really just honor your body, listen within before you listen to me today. A few more circles in this direction, inhaling forward and exhaling back. Good, and then bringing the hands here to the shins, we'll rock forward and back. So we're actually bringing energy up the spine. It's a very specific way of warming up the spine. So if you can think about this low back lumbar spine area and bringing the movement really there um, and isolating it there, you're keeping the head relatively straight and you can use your hands to help pull the chest forward and then round back. And again, we'll work with the breath so that we're inhaling forward and exhaling back. So we're bringing energy up the spine from the base to this low back area. So if you can really isolate the movement there, that's great. And the breath can be pretty strong here as you inhale forward and exhale back. And then bring the hands out to the knees and we'll change the movement so it's moving up the spine to the heart center. So it's really like you're moving forward from the heart center and back from the back of the heart. So bringing that movement up to that area. Again, trying to isolate the movement there as much as you can and see if you can anchor your mind there. So again, if eyes are closed, that can help you draw inward or so, for some it helps, it may, spin you out a little bit. So whatever works, if you want a soft gaze or eyes closed, just try to anchor your awareness in this area of the heart. Making room in the front of the body and the back of the body. And finding your breath. Good, and then we'll come to the neutral spine, bring the hands to the shoulders. Inhale to the left, 
and exhale to the right. So you can find the pace that works for you. Twisting the spine here. We're gonna start to reclaim some of our energy. We're gonna build our energy and really use it specifically, kind of hone, hone it and, and um, work with it in a specific way today. Again, it's inhaling left, exhaling right, and you find the pace that works for you. Good, and then release. And now we'll make shoulder shrugs. So really shrug the shoulders up to the ears, inhale. Exhale, let them go completely. So we're inhaling and exhaling. And the exhale is really just this dropping and letting go. You can think of it as just shrugging off the weight of the world. Just letting go whatever's weighing on you. Just let it go with exhale. Good. And now one last move here. We're going to work with an energetic breath and we'll be inhaling, bringing the elbows back. Exhale, cross. Inhale, bring them back, and then this time we'll throw them over the shoulders. So it's a little bit of a, a brain teaser. We're inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling. Even for a little bit more of a brain tease, you can cross in an opposite direction every time you cross at the heart. And if you get off track, the inhale is every time you move the elbows back. So it's inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And you find the pace that works for you. If you wanna go a little faster, feel free, but we're really building energy. You know, when we have all this energy going out as we give to others, we really only have a finite amount. And so we can get very depleted. And it's so, so important. It's so important for all those that we serve that we bring our energy back, reclaim it. A little bit longer here. Good, and then just release the hands down. And you can close your eyes here and notice what's starting to wake up in you you might start to feel a little bit more enlivened and have this sense of maybe more parts of you coming online. Let's notice that. And we'll place one hand on the belly and one hand on the heart. And find your breath here. See if you can really expand your breath. Think about this idea of reclaiming, like you're drawing your energy back to yourself, the way to charge yourself up like a charging station. And why don't we all bring to mind the idea of calm strength? So we'll invite in a visual that evokes calm strength. And that could be something in nature be a place in nature that evoked that sense of calm strength. It could be a time that you felt that within yourself. It was a time you saw it in someone else. So see if you can connect to that idea of calm strength. Maybe even develop a visual for it. If that's a little tricky, you can just work with those words, calm strength. Let's take one more breath here. And then release and we'll come to all fours. So setting up in a table position on your mat, on the floor, on your rug, whatever it is, we'll begin to inhale and feel the whole length of the spine and exhale and round. Inhale, it's like you're claiming the whole front body and then exhale, acknowledge the whole back body. Inhaling and exhaling. 
and work with that cat cow, inhaling and arch, exhaling and rounding. We'll do a little bit of uh, work with breath today and um, we'll be pausing the breath at some points. If you're pregnant or you think you might be pregnant, um, that's not the breath for you, so please don't pause. Um, also, if you have untreated high blood pressure or just if it makes you lightheaded or dizzy, just don't pause the breath. But we'll work with that now. We'll take a full inhale as we arch and then exhale and round and pause for a beat at the end of that exhale and then release and inhale and exhale and round. Pause the breath at the end of the exhale. And then once more, inhale and exhale and pause. Good, and then find a neutral spine. We're gonna press out through the left heel, so straightening the left leg, and then reach out through the right hand. We're gonna spin the left toes down to the floor so there's an internal rotation to the upper inner thigh. Reach out through the hand and then get longer in either direction. Try to draw these low ribs in slightly. So low ribs drawing into the spine. You'll feel a little bit more engagement in the core. And then take out any extraneous movement. So we'll inhale here. And then exhale, draw in. Elbow to knee, a little balance challenge. You can pause at the end of the exhale if you'd like. And then inhale, extend out. Remember, you're drawing the lowest ribs in. Exhale, draw everything in, crunch in. Inhale, expand out. Exhale and draw in. Maybe find that little pause at the end of the exhale. And then inhale, reach out one more time. And we'll release on down and switch sides. So now the right leg is pressing out behind you, really press through that heel and then spin the leg so the toes are pointing straight down towards the floor and the left arm will extend. Really get long in either direction and find that integration of the core as you draw the low ribs in. We'll take a little bit of the curve out of the low spine. And get as still as possible. Get long and inhale here. And then exhale, draw your elbow in, crunch the knee in. And again, we'll inhale and extend. Exhale and draw in, maybe find that pause at the bottom of the exhale. Once more, inhale, extend. And exhale, draw everything in, maybe find that little pause in the breath. Inhale, extend once more. And then exhale, release hands to the floor. Let's come rise up to knees and we'll inhale, sweep up. See if you can get really big here. And then exhale, release the forearms to the floor. So it's a version of table with forearms on the floor. And then inhale, rock forward, drop the belly with the chest and tail. And exhale, we'll tuck the toes under and press to down dog. If that doesn't work for you, you're finding a child's pose. And then we'll inhale, release, and find that cow pose, dropping the belly, lifting the chest, tail. Exhale, draw back, and find child's pose. Inhale, sweep up again. So reaching up, stretching up into all your cells. And then exhale, release the forearms to the floor. Inhale, rock forward to all fours, find an arch in the spine. And then exhale, we'll tuck toes and find down dog. And you can stay here in down dog if that doesn't work for you. You can find child's pose with the hips resting on the heel. And if you aren't in down dog, you can bend and straighten each knee, pressing through the opposite heel. And really acknowledging the back of the legs, the back of the body. And work the hips back, away from the hands, up towards the ceiling and back towards the back wall behind you. Take one more breath here. And then we'll walk hands to meet the feet and find a forward fold. And this can be done with knees bent quite a bit. 
You can even find a deep bend in the knees. We're really going to take advantage of gravity here, letting the head go. So feel that. If you thought you let it go, let it go even more. And shake it out yes or shake it no. Whatever feels good here. Let anything that's not serving you, let it just roll off your shoulders. Take one more deep breath. And then we'll come up very slowly, just one vertebrae at a time. Coming up to stand, the head will be the last to come up. Good. And I can see my head is chopped off, so <laughs> we do the best we can here. <laughs> All right, so coming to the front of your mat, let's inhale and sweep arms up. And exhale and fold forward. You can press into the shins and inhale, find the half fold. And then exhale, release everything, let the head go. That's so nice. Inhale to rise up. And exhale, hands to heart. Do that again. Inhale, sweep arms up. And exhale, big fold as you stretch out your wings. And then inhale, find the half fold. You can press into the shins, get the spine really long. And exhale, let's step to plank here or a version of plank. So you can have plank with knees down is a great version. You can also come down to forearms, which always feels much better for my wrists. So wherever you are, See if you can do that work of drawing the low ribs in a little bit. And then press through the heels, press forward through the crown and even the sternum. And then find that, that, that strong belly. If you can even invoke a little calm strength here in plank. Finding that smooth inhale and exhale. Ooh. Let's try that again, finding calm strength. One more inhale and exhale. And we'll release all the way down to the belly and find Sphinx Pose. So here we're drawing the chest forward through the hands. The elbows are drawing back like you're isometrically dragging them along the floor as the chest moves forward. Take a breath here into the heart. And then we'll release, bring the hands by the low ribs, press up and back, and you can find down dog. Good, finding your breath here in down dog. See if you can bring the breath to the back area of the lungs. We're gonna be working all areas of the lungs, working the whole respiratory system to strengthen it, working the immune system. So see if you can breathe into the back lung area here. Bring more breath into that area. Take one more inhale and exhale. And then we'll step the right foot forward and set up for a triangle pose. So we'll be setting up with the heels in alignment and you can stretch arms out wide and then reach through the front hand, reach, 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 reach. And find your version of triangle. So it might be the hand is above the knee, it might be below the knee, it might be on a, your rolled up prop, your blanket, or block. We're trying to get the right hip underneath us and the left chest opening up towards the ceiling. You may notice that you've got some kind of crunchiness in the sides. So if you can extend the sternum forward, get longer through both sideways. Good. Take one more breath here. Actually, let's take one more. Good. And then inhale to rise up. And we'll find a reverse triangle. So this left hand can sneak behind the back if that feels good, or you can release it to the thigh. You can even pop up into, onto the front heel. And notice how you've opened up the space in the right side. Can you breathe into that space you've made? Expanding the right rib cage with the breath. 
Good. Take two more breaths into that right lung. We can make those ribs open like an accordion. Good. And now we're going to set up for a bit of a challenging pose. We're going to come into a lunge here. And that back toe is angling in. And you get to find the, the distance or how far down you come. We're going to be in this pose for a little while, actually two minutes. And there's a specific hand position. So we're bringing the fingers back to the base of the fingers. Fingertips come back, thumb stretch up. And we're drawing the left hand back. So I may be doing the opposite of, of you here. Left hand draws back. You feel the stretch across the chest. And we're gazing out over the front thumb. So feel that back leg really power up. We're going to get into our legs for good reason. We're getting out of our mind as we get into our legs, quite literally, bringing the energy down and grounding. So see if you can gaze over that front thumb as if you're gazing at calm strength. So bringing back that visual, whether it's the words, whether it's a memory or it's something in your imagination that evokes calm strength. And as the intensity builds here, if you can funnel it all into that idea of calm strength, find your breath. It can really support you. So deep inhales and deep exhales. And we'll try to take out any extraneous movement here. I know it's a lot. Now you can pace yourself by how far you come into the lunge. You can always take breaks. But see if you can feel that strength in your legs, as well as this calmness in your heart. Can you embody this idea of calm strength right here, right now? Guys, you're doing great. Just another 15 more seconds here. Use your breath to support you. Almost there. Good. And then we'll release the arms and step the feet together. Take a moment here and just take stock. You might actually notice one leg feels a little taller than the other. Just notice that. Feel your legs. Feel that sense of connecting to the earth. All right, beautiful. Let's set up for the other side. So we're going to come into triangle now with the left foot forward. Extend the arms wide. And then reach, 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 reach through the left hand and set up for triangle. Talking the arms, you can place the hand here on the thigh, on a chair, you can place it on something that supports you. Make it work for you. And then think about getting this left hip underneath you as the right chest can reach up towards the ceiling. Try to make both waists sideways a little bit longer. Sternum moves forward and look down at the floor and find a neutral position for the head or look up towards the hand. And we'll take two more deep breaths here. And then reach up through that front hand and we'll find a reverse triangle. Right hand can come to the, the hip and also just release down to the side. Maybe pop up on the heel of the front hand. Breathe into these left ribs. Connect to that space with your breath, really expanding the space between the ribs. Good. One more breath here. Good. And I'm afraid you know where we're going. So moving into archer pose on the left, we'll be setting up now to bring the fingertips to the base of the fingers. Draw this right hand back like you're pulling a heavy, heavy, heavy bowstring. So you're feeling the stretch across the chest. And rather than the hips being in line with the front edge or the long edge of your mat, or tilt it a little bit, angling towards the, the right corner of your mat. 
you know, that stretch across the chest and feel both legs turn on. Strong back thigh. Find the position that you want to work with in the front thigh. And then gather all of your attention, all parts of yourself, and channel it into that idea of calm strength as you see it before you. Calm strength. See that calm strength and then feel it within you. Feel the strength of your legs. You can find the sense of calm at the heart. Oh, there's a lot of activity here. If you can use your breath to soften and connect to that sense of calm, calm strength. A couple more breaths here. You guys are doing great. We've got about 30 seconds, so know that you can take breaks. And see if you can, again, just bring all your awareness, bring all your presence to this notion. Take out any extraneous movement, but feel your own strength. Good. A couple more deep breaths here. Good. And we'll release that arrow, and you can step together. Actually, just take a moment here to feel your feet on the ground. And you might even notice that you feel a little taller, like you're coming from a slightly different vantage point. Notice that. Really powerful connection to our legs we're building. All right, good. Let's step back to the front of the mat. And inhale, stretch up, get really big. Exhale, big open-hearted fold. Inhale into the half fold. And then exhale, you can step to plank here or come to all fours. We're going to lower and make our way all the way down to the belly. And bring the hands out wide here. So we're making little gecko fingers with the, the tenting the fingers on the floor. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, release. So inhaling, coming into this low cobra, but giving a lot of space to the neck. Exhale, release. And again, inhale, lift up. And exhale and release. Now we'll bring the hands out into a goal post position. Feet can stay on the floor, or you can lift the legs. And see if you can reach out if the legs are lifted through the legs and find that little bit of an internal rotation that'll give more space for the spine. Draw the shoulder blades together on the back. Inhale here, reach your peak. And exhale and release everything down. Beautiful. And just find that softness on exhale, letting go, surrendering. And we'll do that once more. You can stick with that variation with the arms and cactus. You can also bring hands behind the back, Shalabhasana. Wherever you are, you're drawing shoulder blades together. If you want to scoot the heels apart just a little bit, make room for the low back. Inhale here, feel the lift, feel the lengthening of the spine. And exhale, release the other teeth to the mat. Good, and then we'll place the hands by the low ribs and press your way on up. You can find child's pose here where you can make your way to a down dog, whatever serves you best. And feel yourself coming online. So feel all the parts of yourself that are waking up, reclaiming yourself here. Take one more breath. And then we'll step forward, find that half fold, and exhale, release, forward fold. Inhale, rise up to stand. And exhale, hands to heart. All right, we're going to do one more thing to get into the legs, I'm afraid, and that is we're going to balance. 
So we'll work with a standing balance if you want to get rooted here through the right foot. And you can lift the left knee up, finding one-legged mountain pose here. Helps to really find a gazing spot on the floor. Just get used to this leg really rooting down and connecting to earth. We move into a tree pose by bringing the foot either below or above the knee. And you can place hands together at the heart. And finding that gazing point, that really helps. But make it interesting if you're not wobbling. Then challenge yourself. Maybe lift the arms up. Lift the gaze up. Notice all those little micro moves of the ankle and the leg to keep us steady here. All these ways our body supports us. Make it interesting. If there's another uh, standing balance that you enjoy that challenges you, feel free to bring that in as well. I really feel that sense of grounding through the standing leg. We'll take one more inhale here. And exhale and release on down. Oh, nice. Imagine you can draw breath up through the right sole up to the crown of the head. And then exhale down the left side to the sole. Let's inhale up from the left sole to the crown. And exhale down the right side to the sole. Notice the connection you're making to your legs. So oh, wonderful when we can feel that strength in our legs, feel that connection to the earth. We'll bring the weight now to the left foot and set up for the other side. So standing one-legged mountain pose here. Finding a right angle at the hip and at the knee and at the ankle. And find your breath. That it helps to steady the gaze and then notice if there's a particular fierceness that you're approaching the balance pose. Let's see if you can soften in the face. You can take a version of tree pose if you'd like. Like you can bring hands to the heart. And then challenge yourself. You want to lift the arms or lift the gaze. Or take a slightly different standing balance. Make it work for you and challenge yourself. Moving into discomfort is that's where we find our growth. So feel that strong, strong standing leg, softness in the gaze and in the face. The arms are lifted. You're feeling that expansiveness of the upper body. You can take one more breath here. And then exhale and release. Nice. Notice now this connection you're making to the ground, to the earth. Imagine you can draw breath up through the soles up to the crown. I am. Exhale back down to the earth here. And notice if that resonates for you, feeling here a little bit more present in this moment. And feel that. Feel your own calm strength. All right, good. We're going to take a seat. And if you didn't feel your strength before, you will now. We're going to get into the core. <laughs> so come all the way down to your backs. Hopefully you can see me here. And you can have your arms down here at your side. You can also have them underneath the hips. We're going to be inhaling, drawing the knees to the chest. And then exhale, it's like you're dropping the toes to hover above the floor. So inhaling, crunching knees in, and exhaling, releasing feet down. So if you're finding the low back popping up off the floor as you release the toes down, definitely place the hands underneath the sacrum. That'll be more supportive for your spine. But either way, it's like you're pressing the low back into the floor. And if you'd like to add a little bit more, well, you can bring the feet farther and farther away from the hips, but still work with that inhaling, lifting, and exhaling, releasing. Keep the low back snugging down. 
a little bit different way of breathing than you might be used to, but we're pressurizing our system here. Inhaling, lifting, exhaling. You might even work with straightening the legs out, covering them, working with the straight leg position, inhaling and exhaling. We'll be here for a little while here. Pace yourself, but know that getting into the core, into your belly is such a great way to connect to your own personal power. And when we're connected more to our personal power, we're not so swayed by all the things that are swirling around us. It's a really, really important and really good reason to stick with it, get into the core and find your own power. Do three more. Almost there, last one. We can hug the knees in here and release them down. One a nice bridge here, lifting the hips up. You can shimmy shoulders together and grab the edges of your mat or clasp them underneath you to make it work for you. But let's see if we can bring breath up into the chest, feel all this life we're making in the front body and take some nice big inhales here. Do you soften in the jaw and in the face? Take advantage of this opening in the chest. Take one more deep inhale and exhale, release on down. You can bring the arms out wide here and just move the knees side to side to side. We'll release for the low back. Good. And then very gently move them into the chest and we'll roll them in one direction. Knees moving in circles with the help of the hands, and then in the other direction. Good. And now we're going to move to my favorite, favorite relaxation techniques. So we're going to move to the wall. If you happen to have a block, that's fabulous. You can work with your rolled up towel, but um, a stack of dictionaries or hard books can work really, really well for this. And I encourage you to find those and set up for this because this is a really, really wonderful pose to bring everything down. And it's, um, we'll be at the wall. So you might have to work a little bit to find space at a wall, but you can also do this with legs up on a chair or on a bed. And what it will look like is you're going to be coming to, with one hip to the wall, and bring your little prop along, and then spin to bring the legs up the wall. So your hips are pretty close to the wall, and then you can bend your knees to lift your hips and place your block or your prop underneath it. So you're in this little bit of an inversion. So if you find that the legs are not resting very well against the wall, you might be too close to the wall. And you have to find that position for the block where it really is supporting you underneath the sacrum. For me, there's, I don't know, maybe about five inches from my seat and the, and the wall. So notice what works for you. And then once you find that position, just settle in here and notice the shifts that happen in the body when we move into this inverted position. Notice that sense of calming, that sense of quieting that happens in the mind. And yoga, you know, we talk a lot about that notion of letting go and surrendering. And sometimes that can be a little confusing, that idea of sur surrendering can feel like, oh, that means I have to give up. But really, it's it's not that at all. It's, it's that idea of accepting whatever it is that's going on in your life. So that when you move into acceptance, 
it's not you're not resisting these different pieces and parts that might bring you challenge but rather they just are and when we separate from that resistance and move towards this place of acceptance we're embracing all that already is and paving the way for growth and for change See if you can use this time in a place of surrender, place of acceptance for all that is. Couple more breaths here. And then we'll bend the knees and make your way down off the prop and come to a seated position. We're going to end with a breath practice. And please don't skip this. This is a breath practice that is um, one that will serve you so well, hopefully not just today, but, but um, throughout your life. It's a really, really beautiful practice that I'd love to share. So make your way gently and lovingly to a seated position. And if you can prop your hips up a little bit, you can even sit in a chair um, because we will be seated for a little while. You wanna be able to have the spine nice and straight. I'm sitting on a nice thick blanket but again you can sit on a chair might be if you've got a cushy couch you might want to place something more firm a pillow underneath you so that you can find that length through the spine we're going to work with a breath to finish and it's a breath my teacher calls the anti-insanity breath and so it seems fitting let's let's go with this the left palm is going to face the chest and the right palm is on top of the left and the thumbs touch. Actually, I'll come up a little bit closer. So it's the left palm facing the chest, right palm on top. And then we're making pretty much a straight line to the parallel to the floor. And we'll be working with those pauses in the breath. So again, no pauses if you think you're pregnant or might be pregnant or if you have untreated high blood pressure. But we're going to be inhaling fully and pausing, exhaling fully, and pausing. So inhale, pause for three, two, one, and exhale, pause for three, two, one. And then continuing at the length of pause that works for you. So you might want to make it a little shorter or maybe you want to lengthen it. And I encourage you to lengthen it to where it gets interesting, but it doesn't leave you gasping for your next breath. And the eyes can be closed or you can work with this very specific gaze of gazing down towards the tip of the nose, which is a little unusual, I know. But it actually has a specific way of working the pituitary gland with this pressure from the optic nerve. That works for you. You're just bringing a soft gaze to the tip of the nose. You won't see the nose, but you're moving the eyes in that direction. And working with that inhaling and pausing at the top of the inhale, stretching it out to where it's interesting. It doesn't leave you gasping for the next breath. And then finding that same length of pause at the bottom of the exhale. Notice if you have a bit of grasping in the pause, that sense of sort of holding on, and see if you can find some softness in the pause. The pause has this beautiful way of keeping us present. 
really capturing our attention. So don't miss that. Let's see if you can find a little softness there. And we'll take one more breath in that way. Release the hands down. Just notice how you feel. Notice there's a little bit more space for you. You feel a little bit more like you've reclaimed yourself. You feel a little bit more connected to your own calm strength. Let's bring the hands together at the heart and envision us taking this out into our day, out to the people that we serve, moving from a place that is more embodied, more present. Beautiful. And then remembering that namaste means I celebrate the divine light in you, in me, and in all beings. Namaste. So thank you guys. I hope you can use some of those techniques through your days or find a practice that works for you. Um, find a daily practice, ideally, that you can use to really help keep you centered, take care of yourself. It's so important. And if you want to work with that anti-insanity breath, I have that on I have a YouTube channel. You can see a lot of these techniques there. Um, it's if you Google Betsy Yoga or Betsy Yoga Tools, you'll find it. Um, so I hope that you can integrate some practices that really help to reclaim you, not just um, today, but every day, and maybe sprinkle it throughout the day. That's what I find works best for me is really just keep coming back, just keep coming back and, and centering and finding yourself. So blessings to all you amazing teachers and staff, District 97, thank you.